For years, my 3D printer has been the heart of each and every project. But as I've progressed, I've started to wonder, what could I do if I had more? As if the universe was listening to my thoughts, a week later, Makera sent me an email asking if I wanted to try their desktop CNC. But my experience was next to nothing, so naturally, I said I'd take it. And then came the hardest part, waiting. But a couple of weeks later, the package finally arrived. The first unofficial challenge was getting it upstairs. I guess I sort of ignored the text on the box, which said team lift, but thankfully I was able to manage. Step two was to find a home for it. Fortunately, my desk is built like a brick, so after some frantic rearranging, I set it up right next to where I work. After opening all of the boxes, I was pretty much set up and ready to go. Well, not exactly. Before I could start making stuff, I had some other tasks at hand. One thing I know about machining is that it is messy. So the first task was to get a vacuum for dust collection. But apparently, I bought mine pre disassembled. I'm not sure what that's all about, so I used this opportunity to give it a quick paint job. Once I got the vacuum reassembled, I was ready to start learning how to use the CNC. That is, until I discovered my first major issue. It's really loud. This vacuum needs to be usable in an apartment. So I pushed the learning back and started sketching up an enclosure. Once I had a decent idea of what I wanted, I headed to the shop and started throwing something together with whatever I had lying around. Which was basically just plywood and a few pieces of insulation. After securing the insulation with staples, I managed to line up and drill some holes for the intake and exhaust, painted it, and threw some hinges on the lid. But building the box itself was only half the battle. The next step was to design and 3D print some adapters. These would be used to route the vacuum to the CNC and then route the exhaust of the window. A couple of redesigns later, and I had a quick release hose system and a vacuum that was quiet enough to comfortably use. With that, the vacuum problem was complete. Now it was time to get serious about learning. Makara makes it easy and provides materials with some example projects to start, but that's not my cup of tea. Machining isn't very well known by the average person, but its existence is about as important to your modern life as cars. You just don't know about it because Hollywood doesn't make movies about manufacturing, I guess. Instead, I spent some time watching videos and tutorials and familiarizing myself with the tools. But nothing was really clicking and I went from zero experience to zero experience. I can read and watch videos, but at the end of the day, I learned through experimentation. I needed some small, simple projects to help me find a rhythm. So, I came up with a plan. It was pretty simple. I started by choosing six people, my two sisters and four of my close friends. I would make a small gift for each of them. 
Before I began, I installed the laser attachment and etched a pattern into six boxes. Each box would be assigned to a person. First gift was for my younger sister. She likes to cook, so I designed a simple measuring tool for spaghetti servings. This was a good entry point into understanding what tools to use and the order of operations. It wasn't too complicated, but that's exactly what I needed for the first project. I cut the piece out of a block of cherry wood, and it came out exactly how I drew it up. After cutting through the tabs and doing some light sanding, the first gift was complete. For me, establishing a workflow was the hardest part, but I gained a ton of confidence with just the first project. Now that I was feeling a little bit more comfortable, I started on the second project, which was a gift for my older sister. But one thing she enjoys is going out with her friends. So I took inspiration from these universal bag hooks that hang from the end of a table, and I designed one myself. The idea was to sandwich a piece of aluminum between two wooden sides. The aluminum was there for strength, while the wood was just there to make it look a bit nicer. My first prototype was with plywood, and unfortunately it just crumbled to pieces during the machining process. But that was easily remedied with a nicer chunk of walnut. After the parts were machined, I used epoxy and some small metal pins to assemble each half. Once they were dry, I spent probably twice the amount of time I did designing on removing the excess epoxy and finishing each part. But the final step was to glue in some friction tape to keep it from sliding all over the place. And after connecting the two halves, it ended up being pretty strong and took the load of my girlfriend's bag with no issues at all. So with my two sisters' gifts out of the way, I was able to move on to my four friends. Deciding what to make for them was a lot easier, because for the most part, we all share similar hobbies. So for the next three gifts, I took two things we all enjoy. The game of golf, and the game Counter-Strike. Using various logos from Counter-Strike, I made each of them a custom ball marker. This gave me a chance to figure out two-sided machining, which was harder to wrap my head around than I was anticipating. For a small piece of aluminum like this, I was able to keep the same reference corner after flipping the part, but on larger pieces, you can't always reference the same corner after flipping. After giving each ball marker a quick polish, I decided to take it one step further and create a display case for each of them. I did this by machining some thicker acrylic, and they came out perfect. Before boxing these up, I moved on to my last friend, who isn't so fond of golf. But he is a fan of overlanding, which is basically just off-roading, and has been a long time Toyota slash Lexus enthusiast. I had a few different ideas for him, but unfortunately time just wasn't on my side. So I continued my two-sided machining practice and made a keychain. Here I was using a longer piece of aluminum stock, so for this one I couldn't just reference the same corner like the ball markers. And the 
first two attempts ended up being offset from the other side. At this point, I was really struggling to figure out what the problem was. So I did some research and I ended up drilling holes into the aluminum sheet that referenced these dowel pins. That way, when I flipped the sheet, it was perfectly secured in the exact same spot. And the third attempt turned out perfect. Just like the ball markers, the last thing I did was make a display case. This time with a small chunk of wood and an acrylic cover. But I wasn't done just yet. The final step I took for these last four gifts was to create some custom inserts for the boxes. I've always loved a nicely designed package, so I gave it a shot, and while they weren't perfect, they held the display cases in place, and that's all I was really after. With that, I was finally able to deliver the boxes, some by hand and some by mail. This entire process made me think long and hard pretty much every step of the way. The learning curve for CNC machining is a lot steeper than something like 3D printing. But the main takeaway I got from these first few projects was that using a CNC is sort of a free-for-all. There isn't one specific way to make a part, and it's just a matter of finding what works and going for it. I want to thank Makara for sending me their CNC. This machine was incredibly easy to use as a beginner, and while the projects I've shown on this channel are usually more solution-oriented, it was nice to create some gifts for the people in my life and learn along the way. If you're interested in learning CNC machining, the Carvera Air is a great place to start. There will be a link provided in the description if you want to check them out. But I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did creating it. That's going to be it for now, so I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.